I'm Mark Collins, the head gardener here at Evergreen. I have been for the last 40 years. Well, one of the things I've learned over the years is that whatever you spend on your yard will be the best investment that you've ever done in a home improvement. It's been scientifically proven that all your home improvements in your yard pay back dollar for dollar. Well, of those investments, only one gives you something back, and that's your family garden. Plant a fruit tree, or better yet, just plant some regular vegetables in your yard. One of the easiest ways to do it is with a redwood planter box. A simple eight foot by four foot planter box with real good soil on the surface. Brad's here to give us a hand and we're going to build a box right here right now. We're going to fill it up and plant it. We start out with three eight foot redwood two by eights. One of which we're going to cut in half to make two four footers out of. Then we also have three redwood two by sixes and we're going to make a little bench top so that when you go to work on your yard you'll be able to sit on it instead of getting tired. We use four by four posts. We've already cut those to side. Brad's going to cut this one for you. Once we have all the wood cut then it's just a case of assembling the four sides. So we're going to take the two end pieces and set them out in our work area. So we've set the four 4x4s four four in the corners and we set a 4x4 four four in the middle. That's to hold the box in position on the ground. Now we're going to go ahead and put the two ends on. Now that we've assembled the box, we're going to situate it square with whatever the dimensions we want in your yard. We've got to bear in mind we have to have plenty of light, so put it in a sunny spot. Vegetable gardens don't grow in the shade, especially summer vegetables. So we're going to straighten it out here. We're going to see how it fits in this planter. That looks good. Now we're just going to mark around each pole. And we're going to dig a little four inch impression for each foot, so to speak. Now that we've got the holes dug for the little feet, we'll simply set our box over and make sure it fits. Pop down in the holes and it's set in place. So it's real important to make sure that the box sits level. If your site is drained a little or it leans one way or another, you can adjust for that elevation by adjusting the box to make it level. Now we could just simply fill this full of dirt. High quality topsoil is what you really need. But then when you went to work on it, it would be more difficult. So the way I like to build them is to put a little top on here. So we have some redwood two by sixes that set right over and on top of these four bys just like that. Then when you work on the on the garden you have some place to sit while you work on it. When you set down a tool you have a place to sit it. It gives the root room underneath but it makes it a lot easier place to work. Now our box is mostly done so it's time to add the soil. When you're gonna make a raised vegetable garden it's really important to get good soil. If you don't get good soil, you're not going to have good vegetables. That means it can't have too much wood in it. It can't be too hard. It needs to be real garden soil. What Basilio is bringing in is compost. And we're going to use some of it in the base, and then we're going to add topsoil. Thanks, Basilio. Well, we finished our garden box. Now we've got to sweep up, and now comes the fun part. We filled it with great soil. Now we get to decide what to plant in the garden box. For a narrow little garden box like this, four by eight, we probably shouldn't plant anything that's a great big vining plant like a watermelon. Maybe not a cantaloupe, but it's a great place for herbs. It's a great place for tomatoes. It's a great place for bell peppers. And you might want to throw in a few flowers just so it looks good. So let's get started. I think we'll go first off and foremost with the big plants. Tomatoes. We grow 15 different kinds of tomatoes. You have to choose through and read up a little bit on the ones you want. And my suggestion is to plant more than one type. So here we're planting a San Diego Red. Um, this is an heirloom from one of our oldest tomatoes that we use. So we're going to put it over here in this corner. And then another one we have here is a Better Boy. A Better Boy tomato. It's a little smaller one, we might want to put it over here on the back side like that. We want to put the tomatoes on the easterly or the sunless side because they're going to get taller. So they can still get sun while the shorter things are on the sunny side. After that, 
Well, maybe some eggplant would be good. So we'll start out and set in a few eggplants. Set them in, set that in over there. You notice we haven't planted them yet. What I want you to do is take and spread everything out in your planter and take a look at it before you plant it. And then once you're comfortable with it, come back in, move some things around, then you can plant each one. Now it looks like we got quite a bit of stuff set out here, but if we were to take a few marigolds and put them in as well, just to spice things up, one of the things that marigolds do is they help keep bugs out of your yard. Because you're probably going to want to make this an organic garden. One of the big advantages of doing your own garden is you know what you put on it. No fancy chemicals. Your family's going to get something straight from the garden. So, we'll take some yellow marigolds, a few orange marigolds, put them in the corners where they don't interfere with the light. If we like how it looks, we have to imagine the tomatoes being full size. And a tomato cage is one of the best ways to deal with tomatoes. So that's about how big your tomato is going to want to get. Just like that. So if this is it, now we just simply dig them in and plant them. If your soil is soft enough and you've done a good enough soil preparation job, really not much to it. After you get them all in place, water it in really well. And the next thing to remember is that vegetable gardens are taking stuff from the soil, so you have to put something back. So after you get it all planted, it's time to fertilize. And not just once. You have to fertilize maybe every couple weeks during the growing season to try to get these things to really produce. But if you do that all spring long and summer long, you're going to have fresh vegetables in your living room.